Okay, we're ready to go. I'd like to welcome the team, the VW team, first, first guys to go. So make sure that you pay attention, ask lots of questions uh, as we go because it's hard to get a good grade on handling questions if nobody asks anything. So be the teammates. Okay. The floor is yours. All right. Well, I'm Philip. I'm Colin. And I'm Max. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Um, we're here today to talk about the Volkswagen emissions scandal, and which we have talked, we have titled Fall from Grace. And also throughout the course of the report, believe your presentation, please feel free to ask us any questions you might have. But we will also have a slide at the end and time to take questions then. So. Okay, so for our agenda and what we'll be covering today, we'll start by going with the overview of the uh, VW issues. Then we'll go into media coverage and see how that affects the stock market. And we'll talk about uh, social media coverage. From there, we'll talk about root causes for the scandal, followed by action items and how Volkswagen tried to resolve the scandal. And then we will do uh, the team narrative, followed by questions and answers. So first, we're going to talk about what the issue actually was with Volkswagen and what they did. So the first thing Volkswagen did is they installed 11 million defeat devices between 2009 and 2015 on their Volkswagen and Audi models that caused it to be uh, CO2 and nitrogen oxide emissions testing in laboratories. Um, they sold these vehicles for nine months after it had been discovered that they were doing this, and they currently had to settle for $14.7 billion with 475,000 Volkswagen 2-liter diesel. Yeah. Max, is that fourteen point seven billion? That's a settlement, a legal settlement, or was uh, that a, it was a fine? Issue. Fine. Yeah, okay. Fine issue. You in the U.S. In the United States, yes. Okay. Uh, that fine was actually issued um, by the United States, State of California, and the FTC. And ten point oh three of that fine was actually divided amongst car owners that had a Volkswagen, and that's possible. They have to completely repay them for their car if they choose, and they also have to forgive their loans. So if you have your wow. car was worth blue book value of 20000 they would have to pay out 26000 to forgive your car loans. So and I could be driving a free car right now if I had bought it. In addition, uh, they also got it approved by the EPA that if they worked it out, <coughs> they um, could potentially install a new device in your car that fixed the issue. <coughs> the tough thing about this is um, a lot of people like the car the way it is because it drives really well. Um, other issues about it is they still haven't settled with the Audi owners in the United States, so they haven't had that, so they have to figure out how to deal with the Audi user, because the 10.03 billion was purely just the Volkswagen. Um, Thank you. In addition, they have a $9 billion, their investors are coming after them because they failed to inform their investors about the scandal early enough, so the stock dropped. 35% in a single day, which, as you can imagine, if you had stock in VW, that would make you pretty mad. So, moving on, we're going to talk more about the legal consequences and stuff like that, which I kind of got into there. So, they were actually found to have attempted to destroy documents that incriminated them in the diesel gates they handle. And this is really interesting because they actually, there's emails that went back and forth that were found. and. Um, they, were, they said things like, they know, they're still asking questions, how do we handle this, we don't have answers. Um, as I mentioned before, there's the lawsuit by, by, by the United States, State of California, and FTC. Um, some other things we talked about, like, of that 14.7 billion, 2.7 billion of that is being used to create new infrastructure and try to reduce the cost, like, effects of emissions, where nitrogen oxide be vehicles could be in, being used, and another two billion of that is being used. 1.2 million across the United States, 800 million in California alone to work to make diesel vehicles more accessible and also make them like educate and advance clean diesel emitting vehicles. Um, on top of that, it was, the United States is trying to take a much firmer policy on criminal action against these higher ups because only a VW engineer stepped forward and got in trouble. So they're actually, the DOJ is going after the higher ups in VW to see how high the scandal actually went. And this is interesting because they would be criminally prosecuting. So <coughs> in the Wells Fargo case, a lot of our issues was we felt 
felt like the people actually committed the violations and like, started this behavior didn't get punished. So they're actually going after VW's higher ups now and trying to see who they can get after. Another interesting thing that makes this kind of a drama is that VW um, is a German company and Germany doesn't <coughs> extradite the citizens to the United States. So if they do find criminal charges against them, um, they can't leave Germany, they will have the risk of being arrested and actually in the United States. And then here we have a kind of an image to kind of show you exactly what this device was. So it was basically a really complex algorithm software in that little compartment that could allow the vehicle to tell when it was running in a lab versus when it was running on the road. And when it was running in a lab, it actually like performed perfectly, like literally no issues at all. But when it was running on the road, it was emitting up to 40 times more nitrogen oxide than the EPA allows. It also was emitting more carbon dioxide than the EPA allows. Um, the reason VW did this, uh, it makes it so that the car accelerates quicker, it makes it so the car has more improved to torque, um, it improves the mile per gallon that, and the fuel efficiency of the car, it makes it so the engine doesn't run as hot, and it also makes the car last longer. So, although VW leads the world in sales as an automobile industry, they don't have the um, profitability as a company like Toyota. So they were trying to figure out how to cut costs, and this is one of the ways they did so. Um, so what we have here is an image that depicts the um, decline in the share price over time. Um, and this is actually uh, displays the share price over a couple days surrounding the scandal. So the first precipitous drop we have here is when the EPA first announced the fines that were, being, that were going to be leveled against um, VW for the emissions test scandal. Um, it leveled back out when uh, VW halted the sale of the diesel vehicle and they made this announcement, which led to the share price leveling off. Um, it then began to fall again on the 21st of September um, when they confirmed officially that they had used um, these defeat device softwares in 11 million of their vehicles. And um, since then, it has not recovered to its pre-scandal level. Um, this morning, VW stock was worth $121.60, but uh, pre-scandal was worth $253. So it's taken a $100 hit over the, um, and of course, there's been fluctuations, but it hasn't even nearly come back to where it was pre-scandal. So here's how it was covered in the media, and you, you can see from this graphic that it was reported by uh, so many different newspapers and stuff. It was first, the story was first broken by BBC, and it's also been covered a lot by the New York Times. And, uh, uh, and they uh, talked about how and the media came after them pretty hard. And then in social media, this is tweeted about a lot. It was tweeted about almost uh, 8,500 times from September 29th to October 7th of 2015. And it was mentioned in the last year and a half about 100,000 times on Twitter. And with all this being done, Volkswagen did not do much on social media. They, they were not active on Twitter for over a week and a half. So we thought it was very interesting that all this was being done and they were just silent. They weren't trying to cover it up. But we also thought it was interesting that they were showing no remorse. That we thought their biggest blunder was just not admitting the fact that they did anything. And this graphic here shows that um, the words that were like uh, trending on Twitter, like cheating and uh, lying and all that stuff. So, so what's in that. yellow there, Philip? If you could help um, me it's, out. It's just like it's about the different uh, the different cars. Like so, what's all, what's yeah. the yellow key on the left hand side? This. On the, the key? Uh, it just talks about the different cars that were searched. Oh, it's different cars, not yeah, keywords. Right. And then okay. the blue is like were different words, the yellow is different cars, and then the gray is like where it was, so like Germany or United States. So how, how are we supposed to interpret this slide with the combination of all that data? What's so like for here, the, these are like the, just the different dates, the different like week segments, and like the yellow, it talks about what cars were searched for. Mm -hmm. And the blue uh, talks about like cheating and stuff, so it's like more of those different types of cars. Interesting. Where did you get that graphic? I've never seen anything like that, but it's cool. The Harvard Business Review. Oh, I love it. And in addition, something that was really interesting was when VW did break their silence on Twitter and social media, they didn't mention the scandal at all. 
So they just went on as business as usual. So then on this, uh, this is this graphics and stuff that I've already uh, talked about is just about how many different times it was uh, trending on Twitter and the different time periods. So we had a couple of graphics that we thought really captured public opinion and different photos that have been taken. <laughs> So this is a photo of a woman holding a sign that says no more lies with a VW, uh, picture of Pinocchio who has a VW logo on his chest. And this is kind of symbolic because it, they, they just kept weaving a deeper and deeper web of lies and really it was hard to watch and kind of hard to learn about the study of on. And then here's another picture that was interesting. It's of a woman who's saying my VW is worth nothing. So she's set, upset because she invested all of this money in a car and she just feels that it's completely worthless at this point because of the scheme. So root cause analysis we're going to talk about and how did this happen? So one major reason is the Porsche Peach family um, is the majority stockholder with 52% of the stocks in, or 52% of the shares in BW. And this is a really interesting point because they obviously had a lot of interest in making sure that the scandal didn't get like the investors didn't hear about it because their value would have dropped. Actually, on the day that we saw the big drop, uh, the, the Porsche Beach family experienced an $8 billion loss in what their assets were worth. Um, another major root cause was unethical uh, business practices. I mean, honestly, they cheated, they lied, they did everything in the book that was wrong. Um, there was a lack of communication that really created an issue. They didn't communicate with their employees, their shareholders, uh, anyone about what they had done wrong. And then they just blatantly cheated the United States, like EPA. And they knew what they were doing was wrong. They installed the devices. And that really is a big issue. Um, and then one of the biggest things that we have is um, the fact that it was just failure to up to the actors. So although what they did was bad in itself, it's the fact that they were caught and they still didn't try to on up to it. So I know, for example, in 2014, I think there started to be curiosity about why are these cars testing so well in laboratories, but then when we get them on the road, they're really struggling and not performing like they did in the laboratories. So actually, the International um, Clean Transportation Commission went after VW, or started doing some research with West Virginia University, and they were testing and they realized these cars are, aren't performing at the level that we thought they were um, in lab boys. Yeah, what's up? Okay, so I just have a question. So did they know that they were putting these cars out there with like this faulty like mechanics in it? Or were they like not sure if they actually got out of the road? So it's interesting because they claimed that it was a rogue engineer was their initial claim. A rogue engineer just went wild and created an algorithm that was close to 11 million cars worldwide. <laughs> but um, as they're investigating it, the DOJ is investigating it, they're starting to look more and more into it, and they're realizing that this probably started with the higher ups and worked its way down. So they're currently investigating to make sure, or to see how far up it actually went. Um, but so the, West Virginia University that investigated the car and vehicles. They told VW about it, and VW promised they'd fix it and in 2014. And then, as we know, it clearly wasn't fixed or addressed, and they kept doing the same thing. Still tested well in laboratories and all of that, but was still emitting the same amount of harmful chemicals to the atmosphere. Um, so now we're going to talk about the actions that were taken, although we've had a lot of discussion of they, they weren't that quick on the uptake, but they did have some solid action steps which have been taken since. And um, the kind of, this slide I'm going to characterize with a quote from uh, one of the higher ups in the Volkswagen management, and it was, it takes crisis to make a big company change. And so, of course, like we've heard before, 14.7 billion was paid in settlements and fines. Uh, formal resignation of the CEO, Martin Winterkorn, um, occurred directly after the original announcement of the scandal. Um, the Volkswagen engineer who uh, who has kind of become a scapegoat, many believe, um, pled guilty to conspiring to defraud um, regulators and car owners. Um, and since the scandal, Volkswagen has um, uh, 
released their restructuring plan, which is called the Transform 2025 plan. And so what this plan entails is basically a move from, move into the future of transportation with uh, ride sharing, electric cars, batteries, all that kind of stuff. And they plan to sell a million uh, battery powered cars before 2025. Um, as well as that, they've set up a sustainability council, which is basically a group of um, professionals in, this, in the automotive industry who are concerned with sustainability and climate change, and they're going to be um, present at all the board meetings and directly interacting with the management suite to talk about these kind of issues and make sure that it's a priority. Um, in their Transform 2025 plan, did they lay out like what they're going to do if these things don't happen? Because like it's one thing for them to say, we're going to sell so many cars that are energy efficient, but then if they don't actually do that, like, did they lay out any of the consequences of what how they would follow up with that? Um, sure, yeah. One way in which they're making sure that they at least make a move, even if it doesn't become successful, is they replace 30,000 of their employees with IT professionals and technology. Um, focused professionals, so in this way they're making a pretty solid statement that they're at least, they're doing um, tangible movements towards this Transform 2025 plan. So the, what the point of these new um, IT professionals is, is to do complete R&D on sustainability in the automotive industry and making um, the results that they laid out in the 2025 plan happen. And in addition, they pulled all 2014 and 2015 Volkswagen diesel vehicles out of the United States. Mm -hmm. So they're really trying to just kind of get their bearings again. Thank you. So uh, for our team at the news live, we thought that Volkswagen has not done enough. Um, we believe that their biggest blunder is uh, not addressing the crisis at all. They haven't, uh, at first, they didn't, like we said on Twitter, they didn't say anything about it. They just kind of acted like nothing happened after we came out and they got back on social media. And we think they hurt, harmed the environment a lot by letting uh, out dangerous levels of nitrogen oxide and carbon dioxide out into the air. And then we also believe that they damaged uh, shareholders because they did not tell um, people who had stock in the company about the, how low the stock prices will get. So we don't think they did enough because they really didn't show much remorse. And at this time, we'd like to open the floor if anyone has any questions. Um, I might have missed this earlier in the presentation, but was there like a certain time frame where like they started, like they know concrete, where like the faulty devices were in the car, and like also, does that affect the resale on any of these cars, or can you even resell them at all? Yeah, I can talk about that. Um, actually, there's been a 16% drop in the resale in the resale value of both kind of cars, and a lot of people have been experiencing. Um, this scandal, taking their car to a dealership, wanting to resell it, and the dealership wanting nothing to do with it. Um, that's actually what, uh, part of that image that we showed of uh, the lady with the sign saying my Volkswagen is worth nothing now. That's referring to um, how dealerships are not willing to buy back these cars and only select vehicles that are being bought back by Volkswagen themselves. Um, and in terms of knowing about the uh, issue, it's uncertain at what point this engineer or the management actually decided to install these defeat devices, but um, Volkswagen has always been a very high performing car in the lab, so um, we can only like guess that it's been a part of their culture for a long time. And the farthest that we can trace, that it's been traced back is 2009. So in 2009, that's when they started seeing the, the bottom's right next to these devices. Uh, yeah, Ms. Murray? Um, question either for Philip or Connor. What's been the impact of the scandal on the employees in the United States who work for Volkswagen? I'm thinking like the plants that are in Tennessee, I believe. Yes, yeah, Chattanooga, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Um, well, the headquarters of Volkswagen is in Frankfurt, Germany, and the 30,000 um, employees which I referenced being replaced, most of that occurred in Frankfurt, but there has been cutbacks in the Chattanooga, Tennessee, plant because of these select vehicles that have um, the sale was stopped so that the whole production facility that needed that used to produce those specific vehicles was downsized and some of those employees who used to um, man that facility are were laid off mm -hmm. but most of the cut most of the job cuts that they were experienced and were part of this transform 2025 plan occurred in Germany where the headquarters were thank you does anyone else have any questions
forms of qualitative feedback is really helpful uh, for people to see you know, where they're growing, where they can improve. Yes? How do we put on their team video? That will be done by the team themselves. They're going to have the video of their presentation. They're going to do a little write-up based on the um, review. So good job. How do you guys feel? So um, some silly good things. I saw the media slide that you put together with the graphics of the magazine covers. That's so much more interesting to look at than just typed up headlines. And the fact that you see the video, which those are all huge. I also like the little graphic and the ladies and face wash and the shows where that pain is. A really good opening for four and absolutely Exactly right. I'm trying to make eye contact each other. I think that's so long for one or two people to try to slow down on the ground. So I think you guys did a pretty good job. A little bit more eye contact. Yeah. You were so much more comfortable today. Did you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't make those little parts. No. Yeah. It's a crush. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you look at the screen, it's like you have a vision or something in a row. It's like, if it's on the app, look at it. So try to, try to guard against that. I mean, you were looking at this empty slide when you were talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a habit. Yeah. So don't worry about it. Um, Really good uh, uh, management of uh, demonstrating uh, that you don't want to take coverage like that. A little bit too much value in the Q&A. So try to make sure that you